Good morning, everybody. It is April 26, 2018, 5.56 a.m. Uh, for those of you that are Sublime fans, you know April 26 is a significant day. If any of you can leave in the comments why that is, um, maybe I'll pin your comment or something along those lines because uh, if you're a true Sublime fan, you will know exactly what this day means. Anyway, we are 35 days, 18 hours, 3 minutes, and 15 seconds away from the 2018 official big start of hurricane season. Um, although we all know that this could start a lot sooner than that, we could be seeing tropical storms at any moment now, um, and even the possibility of a Pacific and East Pacific storm uh, beginning this season. Uh, we are going to talk about a bunch of things in this video. We're going to try to get through kind of quickly. We got some updated earthquakes. You know, the center of the country here has been getting hit a little more often than usual. We actually had an earthquake up here in Canada recently. Uh, we are going to dive into that a little more this afternoon, but I just wanted to give you an idea of the latest ones. Uh, right down this line, this website is earthquake.usgs.gov if you ever want to come here and check out the latest earthquakes. It's a live map. Um, all right, let's talk about some weather now. These are our current temperatures for this morning while you are waking up. Uh, for those of you that are waking up around this time, this ungodly hour to wake up, it's still dark out almost. Uh, we got a little bit of a cooler thing going on here, a little bit of a dip over the Great Lakes, kind of moving into Pennsylvania, New York, 38 degrees, 44 degrees in central New York, and then in Pennsylvania, a little bit close to where I am it's about 44 degrees starting this morning it's gonna warm up though we can see the south is starting their days with a little bit of a more average warm temperature than usual which is a good thing the jet stream is beginning to change you're gonna start seeing the dip of the jet stream around this part of the country and then it's gonna uplift over the Great Lakes and the East Coast and that is gonna allow that warm air to flow up into the east and actually begin our spring which is already late very 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 late um, all right, let's look at some other stuff. We got a Doppler radar shot here. Uh, we're following a low pressure system that is actually a pretty big hail maker um, as far as what I've read this morning. This thing uh, originated in Texas and then moved its way over the uh, southeast corner of Oklahoma and then it passed through Arkansas, Louisiana where there was some uh, pretty significant hail reports and now it is currently um, traveling over Mississippi to the northern end of Alabama and then we're gonna talk about Tennessee and Kentucky later on uh, this thing will be pretty a pretty decent issue issue sorry for uh, areas of Atlanta too in Georgia and as it moves to the Carolinas we have a little bit more of a concern here possibly tornadoes uh, I'm not guaranteeing anything like that, but this thing is capable of producing them. Again, we talk about this almost every single day. We have a west-to-east shear wind and then upflow from the Gulf that causes a, causes a crosswind, and that's why we get tornadoes in the southeast sometimes and in Tornado Valley. Um, okay, so this map we're going to be looking at more and more often. I want you to watch something pretty interesting here. There, we get a little bit of a counterclockwise swirl going on here, and it actually registers on a uh, spaghetti plot. You can see it down here in this area. Uh, it starts to whip around up here, and then it gets measured here, and there's a little spaghetti plot here. Nothing to worry about. Um, I just want you guys to get used to these charts that we are using. These are spaghetti plots for hurricane season. Uh, whenever there's something significant going on in the Atlantic Ocean, this site will automatically post it, which is pretty cool. Uh, SWMD.gov, and then within that site, you could choose which part of the world you want to look at. So with that said, let's look at a detailed look of what we are dealing with today with this forecast. So like I said, right now we are over Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Tennessee. There's that little bit of yellow there. That's where the, lo the more severe weather is going to be. We still have this other storm that is just now moving off of the west uh, or the east side of New York and New Hampshire, Vermont. We got Massachusetts in there, probably still dealing with some rain. It rained all day while I was at work yesterday in, near uh, Philadelphia. I was actually near the Jersey border uh, working, so it was on and off rain all day, heavy at times, um, and then finally pushed out. Now, I'm not sure how far this morning... Uh, run is going to let me go here. It usually gives me at least 10 frames. We're going to watch this. It's going to move. You're going to watch it move off of Arkansas through Mississippi and Alabama and then to Georgia. And you can see it flares up at different times. This area right here was pretty significant. 
Uh, this will be later on in the day. This is the border of Alabama and Georgia. That's going to be a significant area to watch if you're in central Georgia. Um, and this, I think, is going to pass right over Atlanta. So Atlanta is going to have some significant weather today. And then you see this thing begin to curl up before it, get, before it does anything really significant to Florida. Maybe the top half of the panhandle can see some rain, but it's not going to be anything spectacular. Uh, but then as we move up the East Coast, we get through South Carolina and North Carolina, Virginia, and I want to say Maryland and Delaware, basically the Chesapeake Bay area, especially those areas closest to water. I want you to be on alert today. You're going to get some strong thunderstorms moving through there. This is a counterclockwise motion, so there will be some pull in from the ocean, maybe in... Um, an east to west wind coming in at certain times as this is rotating and rolling up the east coast and then as we move into friday that's when areas of the northeast need to be on alert now this won't be cold enough for it to snow it may be a chilly rain uh, but all of long island all of new jersey all of connecticut basically the entire uh western half of Massachusetts, moving up and through Vermont and Maine, um, all of southeastern New York, and most of Pennsylvania, basically minus uh, Pittsburgh, going diagonal up to central Pennsylvania, might be out of the loop for this one. You can see areas here of West Virginia have been covered in rain, and we got areas of Virginia that are going to be dealing with rain coming uh, Friday. So for those of you weekend plans, um, plan accordingly basically you can check these charts anytime you want this is tropical tidbits and also take a look at the little bit of a low pressure that kind of dips down from uh, up by the Great Lakes now this may be a little bit of a more chilly situation only because it's a downflow from the from the jet stream so that's gonna allow the Canadian cold air to come down you can see little patches of snow moving over the Great Lakes we're talking about possibly Wisconsin and Michigan as we move into Saturday may get some snow accumulation probably nothing significant but you can see this low pressure wants to settle just over northern New York and Canada but what that's gonna do is that's gonna flow moisture down through the Great Lakes and back into the Northeast once again for Sunday so basically it's gonna rain a day it's not gonna rain a day then it's gonna rain a day then it's not gonna rain a day it's pretty annoying but this is just that time of the season where we just get these constant rainstorms. And it's really no different than what we dealt with with the winter, with the winter storms. Just back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back moisture systems. The only thing we could be happy about is these aren't full-blown winter storms anymore. Or spring snowstorms, some people like to call them. But you can see here by Sunday, we do have a little wraparound that pulls some snow into western New York. And that would be concerning to anywhere to the east of the Great Lakes. Probably nothing significant once again but still something to pay attention to. We'll go to the end of the run here and see what we got left. Some of that snow gets pulled down into central New York, as you can see. That low pressure moves off by Monday, April 30th. A little bit of rain in, uh, what do we got here, eastern New York, and then that'll probably move out. But then we have this little thing here is going to be interesting. Probably just mountain snow, but I'm going to keep an eye on this system as it moves down because you can see the central low pressure is right there. These close lines mean pretty high wind, so we're going to take a closer look tomorrow at Oklahoma, Kansas, and Nebraska. Could be dealing with some wind events, maybe tornado situation if the winds are right, but then look, I don't know, this is kind of weird up here too. we got a mix of snow, uh, the sleet line, and then rain, so we'll see if this thing wants to barrel over the Great Lakes as we move into the beginning of the next week. So that's what we have right now. A little bit of a closer look at what we're going to be dealing with. This is current time, this last frame 200. But to give you an idea of where this originated, look at Texas right here. Look at how this storm just explodes. Uh, Central Texas to Southern Texas. Then that moves across parts of Louisiana. This is when they were dealing with the hail situation. You can see the central area of that storm moving into the Gulf, which means it could possibly regenerate and pull something off in Florida, but it looks like it's dissipating. But this area up here, you can see that low pressure roll, the counterclockwise roll there. That's typical for your low pressure moisture systems. Those are going to move across uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas. We got Alabama, Tennessee, so on and so forth. And then it's going to make its way up to the northeast. Uh, what else? This is our lightning chart. You can currently see the lightning is over parts, mostly over uh, Louisiana, and that's where we're getting that hail situation too. So anywhere you see the lightning, you could see hail. Usually the hail is in front of the storm. Uh, sometimes it's behind the storm. It depends on how the rotation of that goes. Big lightning event going on in uh, the Gulf and Mexico right now too. That thing's going nuts. But um, I'm pretty sure that's it for this morning, guys. Got to get ready for work. Got to head out. 
Um, I will be free on Sunday. We have a lot, of talk, lot to talk about on Sunday. I'm going to go into a, hur a hurricane prediction deal as far as how many storms I believe are going to take place, how many significant. Uh, we're going to do some comparisons to last year and just get you guys prepped with the charts we're going to use and how to really um, determine whether it's going to be a busy season or not. There's a lot of things you can uh, read and look into as far as atmospheric conditions that uh, give you a little bit of an idea of how the season is going to be. It can't predict each hurricane uh, specifically, but it can give you an idea of how active the season is going to be depending on how many storms we get that come off of Africa here. You're going to see a lot of weather. I'm going to find a chart that shows the weather moving um, east to west over North Africa and then as it gets out into the Atlantic Ocean you see them dip down over the Cape Verde Islands and then that's when they become an issue that's where we're going to be using charts like that mimic chart I showed you um, where we can follow the, the the basically look for barrel rolls once they start flowing over like waves you get you got to watch closely because that's what turns into those uh, tropical depressions then tropical storms and then hurricanes and then we just we figure out whether it's going to go up the east coast if it's going to go straight uh, sometimes they come down in this area and then sometimes like we know with Harvey they come right into the Gulf and then once they're in the Gulf surrounded by these land masses it's anyone's guess where they're going to go so again we also have to watch this side of Mexico and the Pacific Ocean Pacific hurricane season is also right at the doorstep so we got to watch this out uh, very rarely do these hurricanes go near California. Last year we had some close calls, but we will be watching that just as closely as the Atlantic Ocean. All right, guys, I'll let you go for this morning. I hope everyone has a great day. Those of you that are on the southeast coast today, uh, basically Louisiana, straight up through the Ohio River Valley, uh, just be on alert. Uh, keep your local weather on, and you will know when the rain is coming. Hopefully this will end soon. We can get some constant warm temperatures, no more risk of snow, and we'll move on from there. All right, guys, have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.